didn't think that they belonged in that ring or didn't think that they were good enough to perform in that ring. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not ashamed that we came from a backyard wrestling standpoint. I don't give a shit who you are. If you're a professional wrestler, then you did some sort of backyard wrestling. And whether you talk about it or not, that that's on you. We do not look at that as something negative. I mean, hell, um, another company that I wrestle for, Beyond Wrestling, is one of the biggest indie promotions in America right now. And we had that ex- same exact thing when, when we were coming up, it, is we were a group, a tight-knit group of, of backyard wrestling friends that wanted to be able to professionally wrestle in a, situ- in, in, in a setting that wasn't completely surrounded with politics and shit talking. So we ran wrestling shows that were just the wrestlers there watching. And then that ended up evolving into what Beyond Wrestling has has become today. And I am 100% proud of being part of these two companies that have evolved from Backyard Wrestling. Because if we didn't have that, then we wouldn't have what we have today. I'm glad you you cleared that up. I didn't know... I knew a little bit of the history. I knew it started uh, kind of as a backyard. I didn't. I didn't know, you know, what everything you just told us here. Which I'm glad you cleared that up because, you know, anytime I hear other nonsense, I feel comfortable defending UWA and saying, you know what, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, you need to go out and see a show, and you know, then if you want to run your mouth, then run your mouth. But. Uh, you know, again, it all, it all boils back to the internet and people running their mouth about stuff they don't know and they've never been a part of it. And and even more disturbing is that a lot of this crap comes from people that they're not even from the United States. And that's what pisses me off even more is they're just going by solely by what other people are telling them. And they have no knowledge of the business. They have no knowledge of the business they're bashing. They've never been to a show. And they've never talked to any of the wrestlers. That's why I love that. That's why this is an independent wrestling show. I mean, anybody can sit here and, and interview, you know, Nikolai Volkov and guys that wrestled 40 years ago, and, and you know, and talk war stories. But I rather talk to the independent guys because you, the guys that you're the backbone of of the industry. You, the guys, you're the next generation. You're the guys that if it wasn't for you, there would be no WWE and TNA and and global and all that other stuff because it all starts from the independent level. You guys are, you know, the large pool of free agents that WWE likes to call you is. And, you know, without you guys, we wouldn't be watching wrestling on television. I mean, yeah, a lot of us, we're completely happy where we're at, though. Whenever somebody asks, like, hey, what are your goals and aspirations in wrestling? I'm not necessarily saying that oh, I want to be in WWE or TNA or do this or do that. I mean, if the opportunity ever arose, would I take it? Yeah, of course. But my goal was always just to wrestle. Mm-hmm. The fact that every time I get in that ring, I get to, to, to live out a dream is mind-boggling every single time. I, I, I put together, like, uh, my match list in the other day. I, I counted it up, man. I'm, like, at, like, 1,400 matches. And that's a, that's a lot for an independent level guy. And still to this day, like every time I step in that ring, the, like I'm ready to have my best match. I'm ready to to live out my dream. And, and you can tell the guys that are are doing it because they absolutely love wrestling, or the guys that are just phoning it in, or the guys that are just waiting to get to the next level. Um, whatever their goals are, that you can tell that when you watch them work. Hmm. No, Matt, I agree with that. And one thing we always said on this show is every match you put on, you should wrestle like someone's watching because you never know who is. Exactly. You never know. And you never, never know. It, somebody could be a scout for, for a big promotion, yep. or you can literally be wrestling the match that a little kid sees, and that's the match that makes them want to be a professional wrestler. Yep. That's, you're exactly right. And um, that's. That's kind of, you know, the way I run business. You know, I run business every day the right, you know, I feel I do it the right way and as hard as I can because you never know who you're working for or you're working with and, you know, who's going to say what about you and you want all good things to be said. And in your industry, you want to wrestle like somebody's watching your match that 
you never know what could happen after that. You know, like you said, it could be a scout. It could be someone who knows a scout. It, it could be someone that's looking to you as an idol, and you know they're they're gonna say, "Well, I saw Eric Corris wrestle at UWA Elite, and he was awesome, and now I want to I want to be you know a, a professional wrestler because of him." And you know, and in fifteen down years years down the road, you can have this cool WWE documentary of uh, this kid <laughs> talking about Eric Corris, you know. <laughs> <laughs> on the WWE I mean, I'm not, network. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, hold, I'm not gonna hold my breath. No. But, <laughs> but you can catch it all on the uh, on the WWE network for nine ninety nine. Only nine ninety nine, and who knows how much it's going to be fifteen years down yeah. the road. It, it could still be free every other month and pissing <laughs> off all the people who paid for it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit what's going on um, upcoming UWA. You guys have a big uh, anniversary show coming up. Yeah. Um, like uh, like we were saying before, like it, it's being celebrated as 15 year anniversary, uh, not necessarily from when UWA at least started, but 15 year anniversary from when this journey, mm-hmm. our journey together as a family started, um, in a yard in Fairville, New Jersey, and that's why it's called Homecoming because we're coming back to the town that we that we we started this this journey on together, mm-hmm. and uh, with the Sayreville Knights of Columbus, and, and it, it's going to be awesome, man. There's going to be a lot of maybe older faces that haven't been around in a while. Um, there's going to be a lot of culminations of a lot of big storylines that we have going on right now. Uh, and I, I think looking at the card, it's definitely uh, it's back to be one of the better UWA elite shows that we've, that we've presented. Okay. Do you, um, do you know offhand uh, where, where you are on the card? Uh, I have no idea what match I am. Uh, me personally, I, I don't like to know uh, where I am on the card until the day of. Um, the, the less that I know ahead of time, the better, because I kind of just like to take it at the day. It just helps. It just helps me, especially because like, this weekend I have UWA lead on Friday. Mm-hmm. I have Superstars of Wrestling on Saturday, and then I have Beyond Wrestling on Sunday. So the the, the least amount that I have to think about for each show beforehand, the right. better or I'm just going to overload my brain. But uh, it's going to be me and my partner, Mike Quest, the Garden State Gods, uh, teaming for the first time ever in UWA Elite um, against Bose and Massacre, the uh, newly formed wretched, who have been pretty shitty as of late. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, it, it's definitely going to promise to be a very hard-hitting match. Like I have no qualms about hitting either of those two as hard as I physically can. And I know that they feel the exact same way. So uh, for the fans that are that are into that hard hitting strong style uh, type match, that, that's a match that they're definitely not going to want to miss. See, one thing um, I, I would say I admire about you about your your I don't want to see your career because I've only seen about two and a half years of it, but um, watching you wrestle is that I feel like you're very innovative. That you don't have the same match from match to match. You you mix it up a lot and depending on who you're taking on you have a very large repertoire of moves and you're you're able to mix them in from one match to another depending on who you're wrestling whether it's a a very large guy or a guy maybe your size then and i feel like you know it's not a carbon copy i just feel like you change it up a lot and you keep it you keep it entertaining every match well, I, I you you I got to and 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 not even specifically for the fans, but for myself. If I just keep having the same match over and over again, which um, there are some guys to do that, um, how am I growing as a performer? How am I how am I evolving? Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm just doing the same thing over and over with the same people. Right. I love wrestling new people. I love wrestling people I've never met before. I love trying new things. I have a notebook on me at all times. Not my cell phone, not a tablet, like a legitimate loose leaf notebook mm-hmm. that I that I carry around with me at all times because I know there'll be some time, there'll be the other day I was watching a, a a dance video and it gave me an idea for for a move. Hmm. <laughs> you you never know when creativity is gonna hit, you know? And then for me, once if if I come up with a move and then I see somebody on television do it, 
or I see somebody on a really big independent show do it, I usually just try to scrap it from my mood set completely because that person's a higher level than me and automatically now everybody that ever sees me wrestle again and sees me do that move is going to assume that I stole it from that person. Right. And that's not what I want because I, I like the fact that I have the reputation of being an innovator, of, of doing new things, of not having the same style of match every single time. And I want to maintain that. So I try to continuously add things into my repertoire and I continuously try to challenge myself to do something new every time I go out there so that not only do I not get bored, but the fans don't get bored. And I, I think I've been a a pretty good job of that so far and, and it's the same way I know that I look a little bit over the top with the steampunk character and I know that it looks very comic book-esque but no matter what whether somebody likes me or doesn't like me when they see me I'm going to be somebody that they remember after whether it's from how I look or how I act or how I wrestle something is going to stay with that person and that is always my goal that if somebody sees me wrestle for the first time, mm-hmm. that they remember me. And you want that to be a positive memory, of course. Yeah, definitely. Because remember, definitely. the negative memory, they'll remember you forever. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, uh, <laughs> but they still, they'll still remember me. Yeah, yeah. They, they, no, you're right. So, you know, sometimes negative press is, uh, is still press, but um, <laughs> you, you definitely don't want to... You, you don't you don't want that to be your your their first uh, you, you, when they say you never get a second chance to make a first impression so you don't want that to be oh your... yeah of course it's never like I go out there and I would purposely try to to have people formulate a negative opinion of me unless I'm in CCW and fuck them <laughs> that's that's a whole different planet of wrestling over there yeah, yeah. they live on their own planet <laughs> they they are they are the type of fans that uh, instead of, of, of t- talking shit on the internet, they will chant whatever tweet they, they would have sent out in person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, they do not give two shits. But sometimes that's and, good, you know, when you got those boisterous fans live in events. Oh yeah, the energy, the energy is They awesome. know who you it's are. Just, and that's that yeah. you did your job then you you did your job they know who you are oh yeah 100 percent. i mean there's a there's a group of fans in czw that think that they uh that they got me you know that they got under my skin and i'm like man like you're acting this way because i wanted you to act this way <laughs> <laughs> i manipulated I mean, you, could, you you could think that you got the upper head but my goal was for you to really really hate me <laughs> and you really hate me, so uh, I win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, recap this. We got uh, Friday, June 26th from the Knights of Columbus in Parlin, 775 Washington Road in Parlin, New Jersey. Tickets available on uwaelite.com. You can also go to their Facebook page. Uh, UWA Elite, and uh, check them out. Eric Corvus, I appreciate you coming on the show, sharing a little bit uh, about your your wrestling past and uh, and future, and definitely look forward to seeing you at the show on Friday. And good luck in, in your match. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate you uh, having me on. And for anyone that's listening, if you wanna shoot me a follow, I'm at Eric Corvus on Twitter, at Eric Corvus on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And you can find me on Facebook at Eric Corvus as well. Uh, yeah, man, thanks a lot for having me on. I'm sure I'll see you at some point this weekend. Absolutely, Eric, and I'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. Take care. That was uh, Eric Corvus, ladies and gentlemen. You can also get his merchandise at Funkenstein Wrestling Superstore in English Town, New Jersey. Um, the Garden State Gods, that's his tag team, and just the uh, Eric Corvus gear uh, that he wears uh, as an individual uh, wrestler when he's in singles competition but uh he, he's a good guy funny guy like i said he's very innovative in the, in the ring he likes to change it up he's he's not bland or boring and um a very very fun guy to watch and um as is his partner mike quest and uh 
I will be attending that show Friday night. So any fans of Damage 365 Radio or our network want to come down, uh, visit UWA.